Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Saturday morning, so you know it's time for another live edition of the Extra Point. We got Tasha T. Sizzle sitting firmly in the middle. Andre Benjamin, Mr. Boomer Stoner himself, Mr. Brandon Lewis. How goes it today, gang? Back to work, enjoying my summer before it's time to go back to school in the fall. Right on, right on. Tasha T. Sizzle, how goes it down in the Diara? Oh, it goes lovely as usual. As usual. Now, as usual, we have a jam packed show for you today. Got tons of sports to get into. I got to get y'all's thoughts on a plethora of topics. But before we do that, of course, a word from our sponsor. We are sponsored by May Jane's Coffee. That's M-A-E-J-A-N-E-S coffee.com. You can get your Colombian and your brand new whiskey blend coffee, freshly ground by my daughter. And she will, when you order it, she will pack it up, well, grind it up, pack it up and ship it to you. And you'll get it maybe in about two to three days. But again, thank you for your continued support of her company. I'm very proud of her. Uh, she has t-shirts, she has the syrups to put in the coffee for those of you who just cannot drink straight black coffee. Again, that is May Jane's Coffee, M-A-E-J-A-N-E-S-C-O-F-F-E-E dot com. Right on. Shouts out to our sponsor, May Jane's Coffee. And we're also brought to you by Wolverine Comics, hosted by one Michigan Mike Michael Hasso, who is selling the Hawaiian Seas today. Hope Ooh. he's having a great time with his family he will be back next week uh so make sure you check out may james coffee make sure you check out wolverinecomic.com and michael hasso on instagram right shouts out to shamika nicole checking in with yes sponsor hey we all have to support one another now speaking of support one another brandon you've been out for a while so we're coming to you first now nba free agency is underway there's been a lot of crazy happenings going on. But we want to get your thoughts on this. Now, the Brooklyn Nets, as the Nets turn, as I like to call this continuing saga, Kyrie opts in. You know what, Tasha? Hold on. Let me come to you first, Brandon. I got another question for you. I want you to play GM in just a second. Tasha, right. can you make sense out of this? Make it make sense. Kyrie opts in for $36 million earlier this week. 48 hours later, his quote-unquote partner in crime, Kevin Durant, requests a trade. Tasha, make this make sense. Where did all of this go wrong? Where did we go from here? Where did we go wrong? Brandon, we're 30 seconds in and she's already giving us hits. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's a plethora of things. And I, and I sent this to you. Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up what I sent to you. So what I said, where it went wrong was it started with the Nets. When they allow basically let me go back before then i'm still on the nets though but it started when they allowed kd and kyrie to basically dictate how they were going to run their organization that was the first mistake then when they allowed kyrie to well Kyrie didn't want to get the jab. Okay, we got this. We, okay, this is personal preference. Okay. But then when they said, okay, well, you don't have the jab, but we're going to allow you to play when you want to play. That's so another you think that thing. Was the, that was the beginning of the end for the next. That was again, but again, and then again, you, and you, you, everybody knows I'm a KD stand. That falls on KD as well because KD was like, we need him. You know, so most of the blame lies on the Nets. Let me pull up what I sent to you. I'm just going to read it verbatim. So if it's choppy people, I'm sorry. I was just talking out the side of my neck at this time. I said it's the Nets, KD, and Kyrie's fault. The Nets put their foot down at first and said no no jab, no ball. Then KD said, no, I want him back. Then the Nets mm, nutted up and said, well, okay. If he would have gotten that jab, as you like to say, Harden would have been all in and they would have had a good shot at making a good run. I don't blame Harden because the writing was on the wall. Right. KD sees that writing now because there was no 
guarantee that, oh, the earth is flat. I'm not getting the vaccine so I can speak for the other people without a voice was going to be in Brooklyn long term. Hell, his extension was supposed to kick in today. That's what I sent to Paul. Brandon, That's what I sent to him. Let me ask you this. If you're if your next GM, Sean Marks, you have KD under contract and you now have Kyrie under contract. Do you even facilitate this trade for them? Do you let them ultimately get out of their contracts or do you make them play this season out? No, I'm going to make them play their season out. I mean, the thing about it is, what can you possibly do? I mean, um, who could like I me? Mean, who can you trade for? You know, because now with the way free agency is running, people are locking in where they want to be. You know what I mean? Right. Um, it's happening fast. So if we're if we were going to trade, we should have been trading on the first day right. or doing the draft. You know, um, so I feel like that time or doing the draft. Excellent point. I feel like that timeline is closing. So if we're going to do that, we should have did that, you know, during the draft or at least uh, day one. Um, I'm not going to go into that acquisition that I was thinking about until we get to that point. Okay. All right. So back to you, Tasha. It's funny. I like the way when you started back at him opting to not get the vaccination because I think things started going haywire when they allowed him to come back and play part time. The Nets at the at the time before Katie's injury was still a top two, three seed. They, they, they were still right there in the running. So everything was looking kind of smooth. Uh, Kyrie comes back, plays, don't play. The Atlanta is all kind of chaos. Mark, okay, next question. Does, do you think that Kyrie opting in and then KD opting out, do you think that now there's a rift between the two, that, that KD's like, oh, hell no, I'm not playing with this cat. I thought y'all was about to trade him. I don't know necessarily about it being a rift, but I think at this point in KD's career, He's not, he doesn't have time to be playing around with people who are not serious about balling. Especially you know, somebody who, who's already got a title, already got money, already right. got movies, already and, got shoe deals, yeah. Right, and we already know Kyrie has the talent. But if you want to stand on your morals, which I'm all good for that. If you want to stand on your morals, then don't play ball. Like Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> like, exactly, like Kaepernick. Don't play ball if you want to stand on your morals because right. other people are, it is a team. And we hear this all the time. It's no I and team. Other people are depending on you right. to be there, to yeah. play. And you can't, you know, you can't fall KD for getting that knee injury. And again, it, everyone wants to talk about James Harden because I talk about him too. But I really believe James Harden was all in. Yeah. At because, one he, point. because he saw a championship. Multiple championships in his we future. We all he, saw that. Home. We all, because I like, yeah. and everyone keeps saying KD was half a toe inch away. If he would have had, he was. He was putting that work in on Giannis in that series. Y yeah, you know, but Giannis did hit that. You know, put that yeah. game six on him. Ba -da -da, you know, <laughs> but I mean, it, it's it's just hard. Like I said, you can't fault people for wanting to make their own decisions and choices. Right, right, because they are but, adults, yeah. But when other people are depending on you, you either have to piss or get off the pot. You either you either play or just say, I'm done, period. And, and it goes to KD again. KD, if you knew that Ky you already knew going in, Kyrie wasn't going to take that, wasn't going to get that vaccine. But then you out here pandering, basically saying, oh, well, yeah, they can't play without me, so I'm going to do what I want to do. You you open that door for him. Look at Andrew Wiggins. Remember? Andrew oh, Wiggins. Oh, great didn't point. Get, he didn't want to get the, get the jab. He did not. That man had not the best season, not of his career, of his life. Look, all-star starter, world champion. Uh, I think he's looking back now like, ah, oh, that vaccine wasn't, wasn't too bad. Exactly. Now you, his, his head ain't fell off. His arms ain't fell off. His limbs, if all you know. Well, it there. almost fell off when he dunked on, on the Memphis Grizzlies, but I'm going to digress. <laughs> Brandon, I want to go back to, to something that you said earlier that, that, that sparked me to, to think of another question for you real quick. You said that, that the Nets and KD, they should have done this before the draft. Do you think the KD was wrong or negligent? by pulling this stunt after the draft? Is this a little petty? Because if oh. he would have done this before the draft, people could have used other capital that they – hell, Memphis drafted four rookies. They drafted four players. They could have packaged together something for KD. Do you think this the timing of it was kind of petty on, on KD's part? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, because, you know, I'm here in Oklahoma City, of course, and, you know, they already feel some type of way about him. Um, they can't stand him. 
um, because of what he did. You know, um, I was talking to one of my coworkers yesterday, and you know, now KD is basically going around chasing. Oh, let me see where I can fit in the best, and I get a championship. This and that, you know. So I'm just. I'm I, I agree. I agree. I'm going to come to you, T. I'm going to come to you, T. I agree. I agree. But, but, you know, but that's the that's the thing. And you know, if he wanted to like. If his mom was fully set on leaving, he should have came out and just gone and said, you know. Right. Like, like KD, you might like, like, uh, like, don't opt in, Kyrie, because I'm out of here anyway. Like, don't even opt in. Although I would leave $30 million on the on the table. Um, now a couple that we got the, the goon squad checking in. They say this is about guaranteed contracts. Ray Ladd agrees. Now you disagree with uh, on the KD uh, point, Tasha, right? Because KD is not chasing. He chasing. No, KD like is not chasing. You can put. <laughs> sorry, go ahead, Tasha. I'm sorry. You can put KD on at least ten teams. Memphis being one of them, and they can be in the run for a championship. That's then not why chasing. Why running then, Tasha? It's not the fact. Just like with keep running, you can't, can't keep, keep running. running. In and out of my life. Hey. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. That was a that's a classic right there. Shout out to running in and out of my life. But he does. He's running in and out of the lives of these teams, these teammates. But, you, you were talking about personal accountability earlier. But I mean, I think I mean just like LeBron. Y'all don't want to say nothing about that. LeBron, LeBron oh. wasn't LeBron. Oh, I'm sorry about LeBron. No, oh, LeBron, no, no, no. Let's get started on LeBron because uh, I'm crowned up and ready. Let's LeBron, go. What, what's LeBron your LeBron and, LeBron and KD are not players that chase anything. People want to acquire a LeBron. Okay, okay. You got me. Okay, I'm going to back off. I, I agree that's, with that part. I that's agree why with that I was part. going with that. No. Okay. He, you know, he he won in Cleveland. He won in Miami. He's in the Lakers. He went, you went back and forth to Cleveland. So why is it? Why aren't you saying he's running? He, okay, hold on. This statement thing. right here is a mic dropper because I agree. Durant needs a good sister in his life to tell him to sit your ass down. We good here. Oh, he got that. that that's Mama Durant. But Mama Durant gonna let let her son do what he want to do because he because Mama Durant ain't the man of the house. He need a good sister to come in to a good Savannah in his life that says LeBron. No, you gonna quit growing that out. Don't cut that. No, LeBron. No. We're not going to no Milwaukee. LeBron, sit down. We just got the kids in school. But We're you know the no places more. he wanted to go is like Miami and Phoenix with, with good weather. Wait a minute, hold but, on. Miami and Phoenix. Brandon, are they not the were they not the number one seeds in this last year's playoffs? Miami and Phoenix. But look Isn't at that chasing. No, that's not chasing. The one, oh. thing, one thing he was chasing with that is the weather. <laughs> no laws told there. I would much rather be in South Beach than Brooklyn. Brandon. Brooklyn has turned into LA East. Oh, is that a compliment? No, no. that's not a compliment. That's oh. trauma, toxicity. You know I what I mean? I that wasn't a compliment. Yeah. No. Speaking of, speaking of the Lakers, I'm glad you went there because one of the, the destinations that's been rumored that Kyrie wants to return go to is the Lakers with LeBron James. T Sizzle, I'm gonna start with you because uh, because I'm scared of what Brandon's gonna say about LeBron. Y'all know how, how I like to fight y'all when it comes to the king. I'm gonna start with you, Tasha, your string puller. You, if you're LeBron, do you want that smoke? Do you want that headache of playing with Kyrie again? He already wanted out once when you were in Cleveland. I I wouldn't. I'm just gonna say it. I wouldn't. Why would you want to continue to deal with headaches? And, and that's what he's going to be because he's going to go out there and he's going to Kyrie. Kyrie is going to Kyrie. We know that. <laughs> but do you? But do you think that him playing with someone that he's had success with in the past, like can no. LeBron usurp that? You think LeBron can get in his ear? No, it does not matter because if you're not going to play for yourself, why would you go and play for somebody else? He don't want to play for himself. LeBron ain't going to make the difference. Oh. Ah, uh, okay. So, so Brandon, let me let me put you on the GM hat again. You're no longer Sean Marks. You're at LA West now. You're Rob Palenka. Now, you, you're looking at your roster. You're looking at LeBron. You're looking at Kyrie from a front office standpoint. Would you rather have Kyrie than Russell Westbrook? No, I'd rather have Russell. 
Woo! Come because in the right. case you know he's going to be there. He, now, he may be Aaron with some shots and what have you, but he's Aaron going to is be very there. polite of you, Tasha. Aaron. Russell, you know, you know, and and Russell is not yeah. drama. You know, um, you don't hear about Russell being drama. Like, even what happened here in OKC, they just gave the man the key to the city. He's still putting in work. And, and KD did not like that. That that no. that, okay, that he was the son of OKC, Russell Westbrook. Yeah. So why would I bring in Kyrie, who, like Tasha said, came and played for himself? You know what I mean? Look, so. look, look, at, look, at, look at the Lakers. Prime example: Street clothes. Street clothes is not playing for himself. He playing for LeBron. That's why he ain't never on the court. Yeah, he's trying to keep and he, up. And he helped LeBron get what he promised him, and that was a ring. So now it's time for him to Dolce Gabbana out on the on the court. I, I get that. So so let me let me let's go back to the LA East, which is Brooklyn. If you're Sean Marks, and either one of you, feel free to jump in on this one. Would you not want? Let's just say you could package up both, send K, uh, KD and Kyrie to LA for Anthony Davis and Russell Westbrook, and and some picks, of course. If you're if you're the Brooklyn Nets, would you could you start over in the East with the centered around AD Westbrook and Ben Simmons? They have no choice but to start <laughs> over. It, that trade doesn't need. Well, to do happen. you start over with young pieces? Do you go somewhere else and pick up draft picks, or do you go get two proven they, veterans? They have no no. They have no choice. Remember when up. Uh, when they were just the upstart, they were spring, they were young. No one really knew who they were. They were playing with <laughs> effervescence. And what what uh, uh, Claude say? It, it's exuberance. They was playing with exuberance. Right, right. The, the flowers are losing their exuberance. Now, yeah, now, they now, they now, now, says, man, you want 15% from the three-point line? Make I it read the, honestly, I'd rather have that over than drama because I'm not with the drama. You right. have my I'd rather, he said no more drama in his life like Mary J. Because Blige. if you're making a game plan around Kyrie and he ain't there. Yeah, what's the, what's the point? Kyrie what's is the point? like now the make that, Now make it make sense. Right. Kyrie reminds me of the deadbeat dad. You trying to plan the kid's birthday, but you know, you know you can't put too much responsibility on him to bring the cake. Like, like exactly. don't put no responsibility on him if he shows up. See, that can be fixed. 15%, we can fix that. We can go get him with a shooting coach and get that worked out. But okay. we can't get somebody who got their own mentality that's all about them. We can't fix that. So you, so you wouldn't, so if you're if you're Brooklyn, then you wouldn't mind taking back Westbrook on a one year. It's an expiring contract. That's $47 I mean, million dollars freedom. I mean, the thing is, they, they, they shot the dice on Ben Simmons, and now they're – they're, they're they're screwed. That's they 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 came up. Who they are screwed? Think about where Brooklyn was eight, eight months ago. You had a real big three. You had Joe Harris. You had all kinds of of ancillary parts. And look at you now. You're. I would rather have Detroit's roster. Yes, the Pistons. I would rather have their roster. Hey, than Brooklyn right that's now. That's not the right team right now. You got to watch out for them right now. Yes. Rather, They're make a slash. I would rather build around the Pistons young core of Jaden Ivey and Kate Cunningham and, and because Sadiq Bain they, than this. Because they want to play. They want right. to be on the court. They want to make a name. See, Ben mm -hmm. Simmons came in without a flash, without a flare, and he, and he flamed out. You know, Kyrie, <laughs> the earth is flat. He don't want, you know, he don't want to play anymore. The only now, person on that team in that organization that wanted to play was KD. And so right. now he, he and still, came. And still to this day, I think he honestly right. just wants to hoop. He, he came to the playground with his ball and his shoes, and they sitting over there on their phone on Instagram. In right. Life. You can't even get them on the court to, to, to take the, the, the run seriously. I totally agree with that. Last but not least on KD, does this hurt his legacy moving again without a ring? This doesn't make the Golden State move look foolish. I mean, it, I always say that he should have stayed in Golden State. That was foolish in its in itself. Right. Go ahead and, and get your seven or eight rings and just shut the whole goat debate. Right. Down. But but KD is already a Hall of Famer, and currently KD is a top ten, top five ball three. player. We can go three. We can go three. Yeah. Currently. I'll say him, LeBron, Giannis, and Giannis. What's on? So how scores LeBron in there, right? I mean, literally, what? Really, on Steph the right now is over LeBron because of what Steph did. But, but you get my, my point. I mean, but what's on the what's out there playing now? What we see, 
Oh, he can still give anybody that work. Yeah, he gonna give he gonna give them that work. So you can't. I don't think that diminishes his legacy or anything. But I mean, it just kind of looks bad, and it kind of looks like. Eh, eh. D, yo, bro. yo, brother. Damian Colton checking in says KD ain't gonna show no commitment. Hell, he ain't committed to his barber. First of all. Oh Dang. my God! D, drop the mic and go to the car wash. Ain't nobody pulled your string, Damien. <laughs> I'm a four C sister myself, so y'all ain't gonna be coming for us who got that 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 Quanana hair. Y'all not he gonna said he us. called him Beanie B. <laughs> oh, you know what? This is a perfect transition. He says, "Let's get Katie to my Mavs and get a haircut and win this chip." Let's go. Let's transition to the Mavs because I want you to sit still because I got some some real pressing questions that somebody in Dallas or affiliated with the Mavs are going to answer today. We're going to start with with UT Sizzle, Jalen Brunson, the who who basically became a star in the playoffs for the Mavs last year. This this past playoff run, he spurns the Mavs and goes signs with the New York Knicks. Damian Coaches New York Knicks four years, one hundred and four million dollars. Here's my question. Why does no one want to play in Dallas? I would say with Luka, but this precedes Luka. We can go all the way back to 2011 after they won the championship and blew up that team because they wanted Dwight Howard. He didn't come. CP3, he didn't come. Darren Williams, he didn't come. Carmelo Anthony, he didn't come. Hell, DeAndre Jordan, they locked him in a house in Houston, and he reneged on, on, on the Mavs. Remember that? Yeah, no, he didn't come. Jalen Brunson opted out. Uh, uh, Christoph Porzingis forced a trade to get out of Dallas to, to stop playing here. Well, we what know why he did that. Dallas? Hey, that's between you and your God. <laughs> I, I, have, still, still. I have no earthly idea because Dallas is one of those up and coming teams, and they're always even go back to the um, to the Billy Ocean, Michael. Uh, what, Michael, Michael Finley, Finley yes. I mean, they've always been a constant. Yeah, they did have a downswing where you was like Dallas Mavericks, but they're one of those teams that are just always right here. So that is a good question as to why no one wants to come to Dallas. Mark Cuban seems to be cool. Jason Kidd seems to be cool. You got, I mean, Luca is a damn good ball player. He's probably one that you can replace LeBron at his top three right now. Along with Giannis and KD, yeah, but yeah, I forgot about Brunson's daddy being the assistant coach there. Right, but but even with that, Brandon, even with that, if your father was the coach of, let's say, okay, we'll keep it in basketball terms. Your father is on the staff at the Sacramento Kings, but you're on the Golden State Warriors with a chance to resign. You just won a championship. Are you going to spurn a championship run and get your money there because the Mavs offered him over a hundred million dollars as well? Or are you going to go play with your daddy who you can go see in the offseason? Brandon, what's your answer? <laughs> I'm going to say with I'm going to I'm I'm say with Golden State, um, when I'm close to retiring, if my daddy's still coaching, I go play with my daddy did. I'm yeah, gonna if you're close to retiring. You but, know but what this mean? guy's in his early 20s. No, nah, I'm going to say with Golden State and get them buckets and championships. <laughs> yeah. Right. And no disrespect. My daddy, I, I you, later, daddy. you either join me or I catch you later. Daddy, if you can't come to D-Town, look, <laughs> and, and the thing is, the money is not even, the math ain't even mathing because with no state tax, the Dallas was offer saying. was even more it's money. It's killing it's it. Love. It's killing it. But I think that's what it was about. It was just the way the figure looked and then playing with his dad. I think that's what it was all about, to be honest with you. Okay, Tasha, I get, okay, let's say, okay, the dad thing did, did kind of, kind of push him over the top. What about the rest of the people? What about Malcolm Brockton? What about all these other people who signed the free agent deals? Nobody, Nobody's coming to Dallas? What's going on? I mean, hey, I like coming to Dallas. Every time I'm in Dallas, man, it's a party. So I... I Dallas is I a know. great city. Like, Dallas is a great... It's a sports town. The fans are rabid. You saw that they, they just knocked off Phoenix. They went to the Western Conference Finals. You got Luka Doncic just just re-signed his rookie extension, so he's going to be here for the foreseeable future. Only going to get better, like you said. Jason Kidd is an upgrade over Rick Carlisle. He had that team playing defense. There's not a lot of selfish players on the team. What is going on? Good morning, Miss Sheila Hastings. Happy belated birthday Hi, to Sheila. you! Now, 
They said Brunson thinks he's a star, but he's a role player at best. Do you agree with that, Brandon? I mean, yeah, I mean, but he um he just got ignited. You know what I mean? He's this is the thing. We can see if he's a star, if he can um reciprocate this again. Let's see if he can do that in New and York. I don't think he can. That that's oh. when you have and I tell people like this is the, the Oprah and Gail thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, please explain. Oprah is up and above and flowing over. Like her coffee cup is running down the sides. Is but they take coffee cup. Off the, the table. Day. Off the table. It's running <laughs> off the plate onto the table and drift on the floor. But who's there to, to collect that? Gail. Hell, Gail yep. gets all of Oprah's overflow. So when you have a player like Luca, all those little role players are getting Luca's overflow. And you Hold on. So you saying that they told Luca, I'm gonna pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive? Come on, word. Yeah. <laughs> Preach. Preach. I think about Jesus. I can dance, 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 Everybody, what I say, everybody want a ball. Everybody want to be a star. And if you're not, uh, you can't fault people for thinking that they are stars, but your play, your level of play. Right, reach for the moon. Yeah, reach for the moon, but your level of play and how your season goes indicates whether or not you are a star. Oh, that's a that's a great point, Brandon. Would you rather, would you rather be uh, a cup running over where you get the the where you get the runover blessings from a Luca, or would you rather go to a city like New York who has had trouble winning and be the number one guy averaging twenty points a game and you win thirty five games a year? I mean, I rather I rather get the receive the blessings from a star player. And let me give you a prime example. I always tell y'all this prime example: my San Antonio Spurs. That's a, that had, is a good example. You had Tim Duncan, you had Tony Parker, you had Monty Ginobili. I mean, David Robinson in the beginning. But when it was the big three there, you had Tim Duncan as a star player, you know. And then you had Manu Ginobili, who was in the starting lineup, and Tony Parker. They were pretty much role players. But Manu was like, okay, Greg Pablis was like, okay, Manu, we're going to put you at the six, put you as a six man. And they still were winning championships. Yeah. And still. everybody played their role. When Kawhi yeah. came in, everybody acquiesced to let him kind of go to the forefront in 2014. Exactly. When he was putting them braids on LeBron, yeah, he was up in 2014. I'm well, sorry, that was learn from that. That's what they need to learn from. They need to have that philosophy. Some corn rolls. Somebody said some corn rolls. <laughs> now, Stephanie, now you stop that. Just that don't nobody want to come train in that hellish heat. <laughs> it is hot as hell today. Baby, it's hot. It's been 110 degrees for like what three weeks, Brandon? Where's yes. the rain? Yes. <laughs> Where is the rain? Okay, yeah, and, and, and we get it, Facebook users. The Mavs are still going to be a playoff team. They're going to be good with, with Luka. But here's my last thing about the Mavs. Could it possibly be Mark Cuban? And the reason why I ask that is because several years ago, Mark Cuban got in the hot water with the players when he went on national TV and said that, that European players are developed better than American-born players because they focus on fundamentals and we're just basically an one mixtape where we run over the coaches, get what we want. It's a lot the of truth. Stuff that you see I mean, it's the truth. They all agree. Notice their, their discipline when they come here. Like that's why my that goes back to my point about Luca. People getting excited about Luca now. Luca was already a star. You're just seeing how it translates to the NBA game. But are we saying he has better fundamentals than American born John? Yes, Moran? they are more. They're, first they're like, disciplined. Brandon said they're different. The man showed up to camp 237 pounds. It don't – no, we're not talking about that kind of discipline. Well, that's part of training. That's part of discipline. Yeah, I mean, it is. But look at what he did at 532 pounds. Look what look what he did. It, 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 is, it is true. And like, and no, like, no, like, no, 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 no crickets. I just wanted to let that marinate because he <laughs> ran out of gas is what he did. He but ran out of gas. He, he couldn't chase him off the screen. Uh, his, He's talking about his overall level of play is more disciplined. Like Mike always says, anytime your last name ends in an itch, you can't go back home. So they are, in essence, I would say more hungry or hungrier than even though we got, you know, we we know some people that's in the hood that's saying, I got to fight to survive. But when they get that first check, they go crazy. 
Name me a current European player with more ball discipline on the court than Kevin Durant. I mean, yeah. that, that's different. That's or see, LeBron you, James. Uh-uh. So you, they, you, okay, let me put it this way. Wait, wait, a Go, wait a minute. Let me get you because you know, Brandon, I'm old. <laughs> Go for what, it. What are some of these players now trying to adapt to the Euro style of play? They, the Euro they step, well, the Euro step lets you travel. So that's why they adapted to the Euro step. That's just traveling. You know that. That extra step. <laughs> that's just traveling. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, the thing about it is, though, you don't hear these European players over here complaining about, I need more money. They're more loyal. You don't see them hop from team to team. You don't, you don't hear drama with them. Chris Stafford, think this was filled with drama when he was in Dallas yeah. with and another so, European player. It was Euro from, on Euro beef. Brandon, did they not get along? They did not get along. That is but because you can have two Euros on one sandwich. That's because he thought he was gonna come and be the Dallas Mavericks when he was already told up front is Lucas' team. Yes, like American-born players do every day. I'm not letting Cuban get a pass for that. That's what. That's what. That's one. Sound American-born players. we can think about top of our head. One. I haven't heard about any other. There ain't that many of them. We're gonna look. That's but just one of those social media one pages that Yakovich was playing. <laughs> baby, baby, so, look, okay, okay. So let's so let's say this. What outside of Doik, let's say, and, and and he won when they put all them brothers on the team in 2011. Let's just keep that real. What have the European players done for 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 the Mavs since 2011? I'm not a man. None. Okay. Let's look at the, let's look at the champions. Let's, let's look at the champion. Uh, uh, Jokic, no. Luca, no. We talking about but Steph Curry. We talking about LeBron Paul. James. We talking Paul. about Kawhi Leonard. Paul, we talking about the champions. Getting, but Paul, you're still getting away from the original statement of no, what? Yeah, did the players take? Did the players take homage to that? Did the American-born players in the NBA say, "I don't know if I want to play for that cat"? I don't think that's the point, but it's true. I don't, but I don't think that's why. I don't think yeah. that had to do anything with it. No. So what is it? Why, why won't true. they? Why don't they? Why, why can't that look, 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 uh, look, look at all. Look at the last four MVPs. Who was the MVP this year? Jokic. Who was the MVP before him? Jokic. Who was the MVP before him? Giannis. Who was the MVP before him? Giannis. Not American. No, no, they were not American. But let's look at the championship rings. Four MVPs, one ring. You want to go back and start counting before Giannis? When we go to Curry, LeBron, LeBron, Curry, LeBron, Curry. Well, I mean, we're talking a 20-year stretch. But, but, but before that, before that, you had the Spurs. You had the Mavericks. Whole team was international. The, the the Spurs were just a team until Kawhi showed up from Indiana. No, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Did you see no, Ray Allen hit that three? No, sir. <laughs> Ray Allen hit that, hit that three. No. You know what? Okay. So let's just say this. We can, we can stay stuck here. We can stay stuck here. Let's transition. All right. Uh, do another non-American-born player. Cause y'all gonna y'all got the USA messed up. I'm just telling no, you. No, hey, I'm American. I'm right. Right is right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, another non-American born player, Mr. Rudy Gobert. He now he just got traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves, and, and the overhaul was so much. I had to write this down. Hold on, wait a minute. My mama want to chime in. AP Colton, you really can't compare Euro players with ours. You or your family lose everything: house, money, jobs. If the player doesn't perform. And not up the park. We don't get down like that. The government got a lot of power over there. Mama, are you agreeing with them? Yes. Oh, and remember, like what well, Mike Mike said it best. Anytime your last name ends in itch, they have gone through some things. That my mama broke the tie. She said there is no comparison. So we're gonna move on. We both win. Thank you, mama. Y'all, don't you just love mothers? Look, look at AP being being all Swiss on us. Right. She she broke it down. All right, AP culture. We see you. Take another sip on your May James real quick. Now, back to Rudy Gobert. He gets traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves to get paired with Carl Anthony Towns, who just broke the bank himself with a max extension, almost $300 million. Here's my question. He was traded for, let me read this off. <clears throat> 
the Jazz get Patrick Beverly, Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt, Leonardo Balmaro, their number 22 pick from this year, Walker Kessler, and four first-round picks. For Rudy Gobert? For Rudy Gobert! Somebody help me with this, Tasha. Is, is, uh, is he worth five players and four first-round picks? And you think he the one that basically, well, allegedly started all the COVID in the NBA? He was. Now. He was the first one that they became all positive. Well, in the in Oklahoma City. I won't ever forget that. Yes, sir. <laughs> I won't ever forget that. He went in there and had, and had coughing all on the mic and touching. Play, stuff. play a game. All over in Oklahoma City. I won't ever forget that. Wow. So, 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 Brandon, is this, is this? Uh, a fair trade, in your opinion? Did, did the Jazz, I mean, did, did Minnesota get fleeced? Yeah, they did. But, hey, it's their own fault. They wanted one player. They could have got multiple out of that. You know what I mean? That is, that you could have got KD with that. That was – yeah, they don't. They just well, trade them. Well, the people on the That's podcast, teams really don't value first-round picks anymore. But, wow, you just gave them a whole B squad, too. I mean, Jared mm-hmm. Vanderbilt was a good That's, role player. Uh, That's Patrick trade Vanderbilt. capital. That's right. Look, the bigger thing is what Patrick Beverly gonna do in Utah because y'all know that brother. That's what he's gonna be doing right there. What's he gonna be doing, Brandon? Y'all know those he's conservatives, like, Mormons, <laughs> he's gonna go on the stands. People don't play that. That's not even they did somebody say it wasn't even a strip club in, in Salt Lake City. No, Patrick Beverly is going to be sitting at a home game while they heckling a visiting player, and he's going in the stands. You know how Utah get down. Ron Artest. Ron he's going to be the next Ron Artest. He's going to be like, what you say? <laughs> he ain't used to that kind of smoke. He played in L.A., Minnesota, he, like Houston, yep. some real brown <laughs> city. Shout out, shout out to, uh, what's his name, World? What's his name? World Peace. Meta World Peace. Meta World Peace. Oh, Meta World Peace. Be free. <laughs> Man of world peace. <laughs> Man of world be free. <laughs> oh, oh man. Man. Said, definitely will be released soon. <clears throat> I agree with that. I, think, I hope so. Be- I think I he'll force his way out. Don't yeah. bury him in Utah. Now, my question is: Does where does where does this make? Where does this put Minnesota in the tiers of the Western Conference now? No. Where does Rudy Gobert put them? Top top four? Top five? They, they, they didn't move three. nowhere. They didn't move nowhere. <laughs> Oh my God! No, I mean, don't, 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 he's he's gonna just compliment the defense that Cat don't play. That's all. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good point because Cat plays he, like a kitten. He plays yeah. like. Re, remember during yeah. the playoffs when I was getting on him about about you know playing, playing soft. From, yep, playing and, away from the market. Y'all, mark my words. You heard it right here first on the extra point. Carl Anthony Towns is going to lead the NBA in three-point attempts this year with Rudy Gobert playing on the team. Now he really got a reason to not be keep his big ass in the post. He literally gave Memphis two playoff victories where they were down by 20 points because he would come down and chuck up threes. Again, yes, you are. What, what did I say during that series? He has never been made to play with his big ass back to the back. <laughs> That's what this really brother, comes in. Brother, to the basket. This brother's seven ten and won't put his back to. Are you are you scared the gold gonna fall on your head? Like what they, is it? They left. Look, the 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 Memphis Grizzlies did not have to rim protect. Guards were getting rebounds because his big ass was out there shooting thirty footers, up twelve, up fourteen. You just saw the lead just dwindling, and he's still coming down like he's Chef Curry in the, with the pot, like. Oh gosh! Now, now I agree. Anthony Edwards is yeah. about to be a megastar, but Rudy Gobert—he becomes unplayable in the playoffs because of the pick and roll. You put and his play, D- Dallas was putting him in the pick and roll. He couldn't guard. And one That's- thing about Patrick Beverly—he's annoying, but Patrick gonna get out there and play that defense, and he gonna annoy the hell out of your star player. He's gonna he do what a- he needs to do. He gave them a confidence and a toughness yes. and a swagger we'll that made them we'll dangerous. Have. Yeah, that made them dangerous. Now, Cat too busy trying to be like Dirk. Now, you heard my argument, bro, with the whole European versus American thing. You heard my argument. Why did I even post that? Let me take that down. <laughs> <laughs> you just killed my argument, bro. <laughs> it's the truth. But that's the truth. When we in the booth, 
We must tell the yeah. truth right here. Hey, and that, and that's, 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 that's your word. word. That's one. That's a check for y'all on that one. I'll get your one back later in the show. I'll get one back later in the show. So you're saying that that they gave up four first round picks and not moving up the standings in the Western Conference? Is that what y'all telling at, me? At all. Who inspired it in, in Minnesota? <laughs> you know what? Who the ghost is going to get somebody fired? The ghost of Prince is walking around there in his in his high heel boots saying, mm, mm, mm. Prince mm. ain't going to be no purple rain. Prince, <laughs> Prince killed too. And guess what? He was born right here in America. All right. Um. <laughs> I'm losing this argument. I think my mama tried to get us to digress. But I don't, I don't know if it's, it's working because because they own me today. AAU ball don't teach bigs to play in the post. You're not helping my argument. Next. Next. I'm not discrediting your points. Your points are valid. They're just not helping me. And I got the button right here. So I can go ahead and just remove that. It's a good point. They don't. Because the bigs now, you got to be able to be versatile. You got to be able to play on the arc. But if you're calling Anthony Towns big, you got to have your B.A.B., your big ass back to the basket. All right. Speaking of big backs. <laughs> Jesus. I on. <laughs> Speaking of big backs, Zion is on the verge of signing a max five year, two hundred and thirty one million dollar extension. You're giving five five years, two hundred and thirty one million guaranteed to a Zion Williams that played about sixty games in three years. Brandon, it's eighty plus. Get, get that man an extra twenty. <laughs> I think it's eighty four. Oh, eighty four games in three years. I'm sorry about that, Brandon. What do you think about this move? Uh, 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 have they lost their mind, or is he worth the max extension? They're crazy. They're crazy. <laughs> That experiment with Zion uh, Williamson is over. It's over. If they need to go and just go on and give him that money in the NFL. I mean, right? He need to play for the Saints. Feel like he on the line. On the old line. You know what I mean? But he haven't did anything. I feel like honestly, I'm gonna go back to his Duke days. I think he should have developed more. Yeah. Develop more. He he came out too fast. Yep. You, you guys know I hate that one and done. I hate yeah. it. He came out he to shoe in front of the in front of President Obama and, and became a national name and went on pro after that. Remember he busted out of his shoe that game like against the Hulk? Yeah. <laughs> he busted out that shoe like when like when the medicine ran out on Buddy Love and he turned back the shirt. Oh and- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he came out too fast. He should have developed and you know, and that's 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 catching up with him. That's really is. I think so as well. But but Tasha, here's the here's the deal. Is this a pride move by New Orleans Saints? They don't want to admit that they picked the wrong guy. Number one, they should have picked Ja. And if they had to pick Ja, Memphis would be the one going through all of this shenanigans because he ain't one that did number eight there too. Ain't nothing to do in Memphis but eat and and watch first forty eight. Um, so. Is this a pride move? Are they being prideful because they got the pick wrong and they're going to just kick this can down the road? First of all, if I'm the Bensons, he going to get paid per game. That's now, come on, Tasha. That's worse than a football contract. That's me. Because you can't try 84 games in three seasons. That's all he's played. And y'all talking about let's back the Brinks big, big, big to his big ass. To give him a contract like that? Hell no. And at this point, it's almost 231. Like, but it's almost like they like Jesse Jackson. We're going to keep hope alive. Like they just, they hoping that maybe this will turn into something. But when, it, when do you, KD saw the writing on, James Harden saw the writing on the wall. KD saw the writing. When are they going to see the writing on the wall? Look, LeBron saw the writing on the wall. Like there, there's there's players that that, that both of them won championships. Let now me, let me give them these progressives right here. That I'm now this is a good point though. The, the Sixers didn't give up on Embiid, who had a slow start due to injuries in his career. Now he's MVP level talent. But Embiid was also wasn't trotting out there 50, 60, 70, 100 pounds of weight either. <laughs> Exactly, and then another thing is to a hundred real quick. If, if they if they're gonna do that, they might as well have kept Anthony Davis. Right. At least he's been on the court more than Zion. 
So let me give you this lineup, though. You have Zion. You got Brandon Ingram, CJ McCullough, Jonas Valanciunas. I mean, you you got a squad. You 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 took you three, got six squad games in the first when, round. But when what you're building around is not there, ah, uh-huh, Did you say you're building around something round? I heard you slip that in there. <laughs> no, <laughs> you no. can't build around something that's already round. I mean, you can't. Even, I mean, you even look at a player like Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley said that when he was in college and when he came out, he was overweight. But Moses Malone is the one that got him to slim down. He, Mr. Fed, Fo, Fo, Fo. he fed into that. But even when he was the mound, mound, round, the mound, round mound of rebound, he was still agile. He was still active. Zion is just big and, and slow. He's big and slow. Now, the Facebook user says he's gotten in shape and the Pelicans will be a top six team in the West. Yes. I agree with the top six team in the West, but that's without Zion. That's, well, that's, not, the, that's, that's, not, that's Zion. not the point here that we're speaking on. That's not the point. Right. Ben, is, you get is in shape the he's same in as shape game shape. Now, Aorta. But what, what about later the, on? Years, years back. This is going, taking us years back. They're trying to give him money now because he didn't got in shape. But what about when the season comes and, and that he going to start playing? He going to start getting hungry on the road. He going to be ordering room service, the ho-hos and look, the plus, look, look, plus, let's not forget that that the majority of his injuries, I believe all of them, have been lower extremity injuries. Because he's too damn heavy. Well, it's and his style of play as well. Weight. Because John Morant is, is, is not fat at all. And John Morant's, all his injuries have been lower extremity. Because That's because John Morant is out there doing stuff to his body. That is amazing, and his body is saying, "Hold up!" Like you can't be out there running and pounding and thinking your body is gonna stand up to that. Let it be known that y'all gonna be—he's talking to y'all too. He ain't talking. He said y'all gonna be eating crow and Zion balls out this year. Yeah, Facebook use when he flames out this year because the same thing is going to happen. He just wants the money. Screenshot it. Screenshot it for me because I think Zion is gonna ball out. I wouldn't have paid him a max extension. Let me put it this way. Okay, Zion was not playing, and they're doing amazing. So why would I bring in somebody that's been on the bench, been injured, overweight, and mess up what we got going? And, and he's going to be ball dominant. And that weight is going to, mark my word, that weight is going to come he's not ready. I'm just worried about it, when the big man start having lower extremity injuries, I start thinking about Bill Walton. I start thinking about some of the uh like the Chris Webbers Greg that, that having foot injuries, leg injuries, knee injuries, yeah. and they just get progressively worse. Yeah. I worry about that. Now we're gonna transition into a little college football because this story was just too juicy not to add. I know it was a lot of NBA stuff going on, but ladies and gentlemen, we now live in a world where USC and UCLA are going to the big ten. The big ten. If you're looking at a map. <laughs> Man. You got the Big Ten over here on the East Coast, and and and, 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 and on the West Coast, States. and then you got La La way over here in the corner. What was your initial reaction, Tasha, to the news of of um, USC and UCLA joining the Big Ten? Well, I won't necessarily say the words, but it was <laughs> the words what? that were coming out of your mouth. It was what the actual big yeah yeah because Mama hates things, Mama culture watching yeah, so we're gonna beat that. I mean, they done both heard it from me, but but you know. That's true. Digress. <laughs> That's true. I mean, that, that is the first thing. When, when you brought up the map, uh, other than, than the points that I'm going to make on this, the first thing I thought about was time zones. Right. And I'm going to break it down real fast. Didn't it, It's just the same NCAA, same conferences that said they don't want to play off because of the scheduling. And it's taking too much time away from the students in the classroom. And somebody else made this point after I saw, after I saw that story. I don't know who it was. I can't. Somebody on ESPN. It was Paul Feinbaum, as a matter of fact. What about the softball players at USC and UCLA who have to go and play at Rutgers? Well, how else are they going to get to New York? I mean, but well, I'm. Just, well, well, well. I, now, now, I get that. With okay, Paul but Paul Paul to, saying, but nobody cares time, about that. Uh, my thing is, you're going to have to deal with the time zone and you're going to have to deal with the time away for the travel. Yeah, so no, the, the travel me. is going to be something. 
Right. Especially so y'all mean to tell you, me you can't going... get a playoff, but you can but you can have two teams that are in Southern California playing a team that is in northern New Jersey that now, is almost them in Maine. Right. Now, Brandon, is this an unfair competitive advantage for the Big Ten teams that's currently on the that we're currently situated where they are? Or for the two teams in LA because they're going to get eight home games as well. I mean, well, you know, equal home games where Big Ten teams will be flying across the country to play them on West Coast time. Does anybody have a competitive advantage in that uh, regard? I mean, LA, the teams out of LA is going to be the ones that's going to struggle. They're going to struggle coming like, across to the East Coast. Yes, struggle. That's just too. That's too far. Like they literally way over here. You know, they almost in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> that's, that's the specific ocean. <laughs> and then you got Rutgers, almost like she say, almost in Maine. They almost in the the Atlantic. Polar opposites. You can't even yeah. come up with a better a better cliche or better metaphor than those two being that far away. I got you. And then when they hit them balls, whoo boy, they. I know it's gonna be vibrating. I know <laughs> in the cold. I know they're gonna be shivering. And they don't. They don't have. They're gonna have to switch like their whole training resume and everything because they're not used to playing in that type of weather. Softball mostly is like beautiful sunshine type weather. You go over there where you got teams up there, you know, they're used to it. They train yeah, it snows in the spring in Ann Arbor. I mean, you yeah. think about all the athletes, take football out of it. Think about all the athletics that are gonna to have to do that to travel to do that. That was my biggest issue, and I even tweeted that to some. Somebody said something, and I tweeted. I said it's the time zones for me. Yeah. Like that's they're gonna, be, that's they're gonna be out of it. Right now, to the point that I was, I had to get that out when you first said that. But we all, I don't know where you're going with this, but we all know it's about the money. Any at any time something like this happens, it's it's you just follow the money. If you follow the money, you come up with all the answers that you need. Right. Now, that is true, and we're going to get to that in just a second, but I just wanted to close the loop on the on the time zone deal. Don't underestimate the power of Los Angeles. When you're playing an Indiana, when you have a Purdue coming to town, when you have a, a Wisconsin with those kids coming to La La for the weekend, it's going to be hard to keep their mind on football going out there to Los Angeles. I'm just thinking – I don't there's think, a lot more to do than if you just go into Happy Valley for the weekend. I don't I don't think that's it. Because remember when Michigan played in the uh, uh, Fiesta Bowl that one year in Phoenix? And I remember I was going to have my niece watch the game, and I still have the photo. I had her laying in the bed with a Michigan blanket over her. I didn't even make the game. I went to sleep because it was so Yeah, late. but you're not a college student. If we're talking about the players – that are going to Los Angeles, they may not have focus when but they go out to La La. But when they, but when they, but when they I, I know or La La. with my daughter working in the athletic department, I know how that goes. When they go in for that away game, they are basically in the hotel rooms. And now with all this extra security, with all these instant thoughts, with all this and all that, they are even more secure than ever. So the girls, where they used to sneak up the, the fire exit, they don't do that no more. Kids will be kids. Kids have been sneaking out the house since the beginning of time. Kids have been breaking curfew since the beginning of time. Team kids have been getting kicked off teams. I, since the you you of making time. A, you make but they but it's special occasion girls everywhere you go. It's a baddie in every state. I know one thing. If I grew up on the East Coast or I grew up in the Midwest. And, and I'm getting a chance to go play USC at night game in USC. I'm going to be bird watching. And, and, and I'm just saying that it's don't underestimate the, the competitive advantage it's that the teams in LA can have. Too. old ones in every state. That gymnast, I can't even think of her name for I West like Virginia. She bad. She can, she Brandon, can go in Brandon, state. You're, you're, you're in college now. If you had a chance to take one road trip as a Big Ten supporter, which one are you going to? You going to Happy Valley? You're going to Michigan State, you're going to Ann Arbor, or you're going to Los Angeles? L.A., of course. Okay. We got uh, <laughs> but, look, but also, too, yeah, I'm going to L.A. I'm going to do what I need to do, but I'm also going to be decent because that's that's what I came for. You know what I mean? I came to handle business. You know what I mean? I'm going to have my fun. If I'm USC, I'm sending the finest sorority girls out to that lobby, and we're going to win 30 to 10. Now, let me ask you this. <laughs> let me ask you this, brother. 
Oh you, man, your, your team is your school is going through something similar. Oklahoma is going to the to the SEC in twenty twenty five. If you had your choice, if you could choose as a fan to send your team to the Big Ten or the SEC, which one would you send it to? I'm going to the SEC. Really? For the money? They got nice facilities. Nice facilities. Oh, would you, would, if you were moving, you'd rather go to the SEC than the Big Ten? Of course. Look, we don't even have to ask Mike. That's why I'm asking this question with you two. Yeah, of Austin, course. Would you, would you send your school to the SEC if you were in L.A. or the Big Ten? If I want to win or have a chance to win, I'm going to send them to the Big Ten. So, okay, I, I, I was hoping that you said that because that goes to my Michigan question I got for you. Does this move bringing in USC and, and SC, does this help or hurt Michigan from a competitive standpoint? And the reason why I ask is because Harbaugh only beat uh, Ohio State last year. He split with Michigan State. He split with with Purdue, I mean, with uh, Penn State, and he split with Wisconsin. Since he's been there, does adding to the me, USC make it even tougher? No, to me, I I just look. I ain't trying to take nothing away from all the great players that came from SC, all the great players that came from UCLA. I don't get down with that pack now ten again football. I just don't. All the good players that came from Oregon, all the good players that came from Washington. It's a reason why they ain't never been in the Final Four. There's a reason why they ain't had a national well, championship. Right. Well, yeah, and that's why that's ultimately why they had to bolt too, because the pack the pack team was they would have to be undefeated with an average margin of victory of fifty points a game to get into the college football playoffs. And before we get off of this, oh, like man. you were talking about all the girls, everybody go out there and Google Erica Fontaine, and you'll see what I'm talking about at West Virginia. Is that Ricky's sister? Damn Fontaines! Fontaine. Pretty Ricky, what they call them. You know, I you know I, I feel like it's gonna hurt them in a way because it's no competition. Um, also, when you look at um, the Pac-12, they're more of like a softball, gymnastics type of basketball. Conference. Yeah, club, they're that type of conference. Golf, yeah. Avocado toast, that. sprouts. You know, you those, avocado toast. <laughs> because you know UCLA, when it comes to softball, they up there with OU. They up there with OU. <laughs> Brandon, we know, look, Brandon, just go ahead and say that your softball team won the national championship because that's what you're hitting at. Go ahead. Oh, take your stand. But, 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 hey, we in the Big 12, we won softball national championship, gymnastics. Come on, who's going to come to Oklahoma for gymnastics? But in the, but in the state of Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> right. Them, them, them boys at Old Piss show now, y'all. This is something that I think the Big Ten they has. They do. They do. They do. They do. On both coasts. If you're Michigan, you get to your hardball, you get to 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 put your brand out there in La La with the new NIL coming, uh, you know, uh, well in place, having a, a conference with teams on the East Coast time, on Central Coast time, and on West Coast time, you're gonna be right. That TV deal is gonna be a monster in 2020. Got a few in the East Coast, a few in the West. Come on, Juvie. <laughs> in different area codes in different area codes. The, the 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 so I think from a financial standpoint, the Big Ten is gonna make way more money than the SEC oh, 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 because oh, oh, of oh. the LA and New York market. Oh, wait a minute. That you know I have to take notes because I don't got old. I can't do stuff verbatim. Do you know that the schools get a one mil one million dollar per year per school? deal from the just from the tv alone every school gets that like it's wait a minute wait a minute i didn't write it down wait a minute no -uh. cancel that point because i didn't i didn't write it outright but it's the biggest with fox it is the biggest tv deal and all those schools i didn't write the numbers down right so i can't say that they're gonna get a billion right that yes that's what it, and so all the schools you think you got a bill a billion dollars or more and all the schools get that divided evenly even the lower tier schools who don't compete well in anything still get that money that look if you are a, a athletic director or president it's a no-brainer if you're if, like and I, I put them on vandy, why do you think vandy won't leave the sec where are they gonna get money from right no no not conference usa but but if if you if you have the New York market with Rutgers, you have the LA market with the UCLA SC, you have Chicago market with with the Northwestern. You play Notre Dame; they play some of the biggest games in the. I just think that's Notre Dame might be going somewhere too. Who's no, that? Hey, no, Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. Notre Dame will have to pony up. No, 
Notre Dame is going to be like KD. It's going to it's, they're going, it's going to be a bidding war for their services. But no, they're, they're, they're obligated for the ACC because all of their other teams play in the ACC. Yeah, but when Clemson leaves, ain't going to be no ACC because Clemson is going to have to get out of Dodge soon now, or now they're going to be the next Pac-12. Let them Golden Domers uh, take over since they think they, you know, it's what they say. Oh, Notre Dame brings the viewers. Let, let they do. They, look, they're the only one with an NBC contract. And they had that since we were kids. And that's one of the reasons why they won't stop being independent because yeah. the ACC doesn't have a contract with NBC. So let me ask you this. That's a great point, Tasha. Let me ask you this. Who's more likely to win the championship first, UCLA or SC in the Big Ten or Oklahoma or Texas in the SEC? Ooh, it's got to be UCLA and USC because <laughs> the Georgia boys – them Bama boys, and just think, look look, look who's going to Texas. Look who's going to be their quarterback. Oh, Arch. And they, and they said the recruit, they done got some recruiting people now. Yeah, they got. A, they just got a four-star out of DeSoto that committed just a day after Arch committed. It's going to be back to hook. Look at Brandon. He can't wait to speak. Go uh-huh. ahead, Brandon. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, That Arch Manning and that Quinn Ewers situation, one of them got to go. That's not going to work. One of really? them got to go. But so it's definitely going to dust on them already. Let me tell you something. OU and Texas are not going to be competitive in the SEC, especially. I can see Texas. I don't think. I, don't think, uh, I mean, football, yes. I don't think we're going to be like top, top, but other sports, yes. But don't nobody like care softball. about softball. Are you going to bring up softball again? Right. Like, football moves. No. no. <laughs> not just softball. I mean, like I, like I say. I, we had golf. That, I mean, of course, it's top notch. I'm looking at a whole. I care about no damn golf. I'm looking at a whole athletic department situation. It's tight out there. It's tight out there. They don't make the you know show. What I mean? I'm I'm not looking at it in a just a just one sport because I mean, the, the other sports don't get no respect, and that sucks. But it is what it is. Exactly. Exactly. That football. Is football that is moves. It's football. the money. Like we don't think about baseball until our college, you know, college baseball, unless our college is the college world series. That's when you, that's when people get serious. Right. That that is true. So, wow, this has been some good conversation. Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, you know we close out every show with T Sizzle's top fizzle, her top five. Now, today's theme, we're gonna keep it in the mode of the holiday weekend. The Fourth of July is on Monday. So, with that being said, we want to know T Sizzle's top five items. To have at a barbecue, the floor is yours. You're going to be shocked. You know I don't like barbecue. What? Mm-hmm. You don't like barbecue? It's just spray painted on. <laughs> <laughs> she walked out on me and painted on jeans. Look, do we need to go to Brandon on this? Do you even have a list? I don't. I don't like potato salad. I do not like barbecue sauce I think we need to take your black card right now I only eat, in the incinerator I only eat a certain brand of hot dogs that are kosher and they have to be burnt on the grill and I don't eat I don't like hot dogs but that's the, if it's not that particular hot dog I don't eat it I you put raisins in your potato salad don't you you know what? I put hot sauce in my bag. I uh, see. Uh, no, I, you don't eat no hot sauce. <laughs> I don't. I'm not a fan. What do you eat? What would you if you cooking out? What is on your grill? I mean, I don't cook out now. My my ex husband was an excellent, excellent. I mean, everybody who's had his food can he can throw down on that grill. Now I would eat his because we would make our own like barbecue sauce. I would eat his ribs. And my friend Todd Story used to make the best dry rub ribs, but I'm not a fan of picnic and and coleslaw because I don't like mayo. I don't like I don't like it, so I don't even have a top five. Brandon, Brandon, what are what are the the, the five items you must have <laughs> at a barbecue? Because we're gonna just play like we didn't even hear none of that. All right, uh, ribs. That's number one. Uh, I gotta have some watermelon. But you That's know what's funny? I only have watermelon around like the summertime. I can't eat watermelon like any Don't other do time. Don't do that ever again, Tasha. Uh, baked beans. Watermelon yeah. chucking. Baked beans. Our list is our, we, we three for three. Uh, ba- uh, potato salad. Okay. Now who and made it? 
I'm a little lactose intolerant, so I gotta have me some bum pops. Cause if I'm out in that sun, boy, my stomach gets a bubbling. You got to have some what? Bum pops. What's that? Popsicles. Oh, three stage bum pop. No. joints. Oh, we only had them freezer things where you cut the <laughs> end off. And <laughs> The flavor ice. That catch you right here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this be wrong. Right? No, we look my 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 generation, we was blessed with the bum pops so where we had to go through that, you know. No man, it'd be a, it was a whole stack of them and you had to everybody <laughs> bring them out like this, and then they pat they cut them, passing them out. Yep. <laughs> All right, so we got oh, you got to have the hot links. You got to have the beans. You do have to have some, some leg quarters out there. Little leg quarters, a couple of them plain, most of them with the barbecue sauce on it. Some whiskeys. Got to have you some, some little throwback. And you know, I don't some drink drunk cola. Hey, when you were a kid, did you get to drink the name brand cola at your family cookouts? Yeah, we did. We didn't oh, have wow. Yeah, we didn't have Oh, but you kids. know what? But you lived in the hood with a floor model TV and carpet, so you don't count them. Brandon, when you was a kid, did you did you get to drink Sprite and Coke, or did you have to drink Bubba Cola and Joe Cola? Oh, no, Sprite. I'm my only child, so we was you know. Oh. I, <laughs> if you the Sprite, you know what I mean. Like I was just telling my daddy about that. I said, you know what? I'm truly blessed. There was you know? a gazillion of us cousins, and we there was two chests. There was one with the Sprite, the Coke, and the alcohol. And there was one with what we got: the, the Tahitian Bubba Cola, the grape. <laughs> Right, he said, "Pass me the Doctor Thunder." That's no. right. That's right. Anytime your drink, I'm just say, Dr. anytime your drink just say grape. <laughs> <laughs> you might just a piece of a grape hanging from a string, like oh, hanging from a string. On me. <laughs> no, right. Pass me the oh, Doctor Thunder. Doctor and, and let your auntie, let your saved auntie catch you with that Coke can. Well, you know that's <laughs> for the that's for the liquor. Liquor with they had to use that's for the liquor. Yes, and, and the yes. mix they crown and coke with. Yes, that, yeah, that sprite and coke. You stay out of that. That's for the adults to do their mixed beverages. You get to drink the Joe Cola, Bubba Cola, Doctor Thunder, Tab, whatever they want. Tab was name brand though. <laughs> Y'all two are so bougie. I can't believe this. That's, that's hey. excellent. All right, Brandon, <laughs> we're gonna go counterclockwise. Who you shouting out today? Man, you know what? Um, I don't really have any shout outs, but uh, you shout know, out to uh, Oklahoma softball. You want you want to get that in? I mean, yeah. Uh, congrats, <laughs> congrats to um, OU softball uh, for being crowned national champions, and then our men's baseball team. You know, they shot the world, and then yeah, we imploded. they had a great run, yeah. And then we imploded. I have to say that we imploded our pitching. Our bats were silent, and yes, the AC. He, he got all you ones again. He got all you ones. But you know, shout out to them. And one of our assistant coaches just landed the head coaching job at UTA as baseball coach. So congrats, mm -hmm. to, uh, Coach Vanta. All right, T Sizzle, you're up. I have two shout outs. One to our beloved friend, confidant, joke buddy. One Miss Tiffany Rowe, and I Tiff. can say this because she put it on on uh, Facebook. Tiffany is sick. Tiffany got that damn Rona. So shouts out to Tiffany. Hope you feel better. Uh, I sent her a text. I'm thinking maybe she's still asleep because again, me, I had the Rona twice, so I know what it does to you. No it joke. Lay your ass down. Rona so, don't even knock on the door no more. It just come on in and put their feet up on your couch. You go ha. <laughs> And the second shout out is to my lovely husband Gino. Today is our anniversary. Oh, there's Tiffany. Tomorrow <laughs> will come, and girl, I can't wait. It's our anniversary. Da, da, it's me and my anniversary. baby's anniversary today. So, uh, y'all know during the show, I have to send him out because he don't know how to act. But I'm getting ready to don't go. do that on the anniversary day. Don't do that. I'm getting ready to go change my shirt. I have on my uh, my athletic shirts. I'm gonna change my shirt. We're gonna go to this uh, beach called Cofresi. We're gonna walk on the beach and we're gonna eat today, and we're just gonna enjoy ourselves today. I want to, and Stephanie, you beat me to the punch. I want to send a shout out to my mom, Miss AP Coulter, for finishing her last treatment. All right, Coulter Strong. Shouts out to AP Coulter. But, Mama, we're going to talk after the show about you taking a side over mine. 
Don't do her like that. Don't do her like that. She just, she, you know, she just finished her last stream and don't do it like that. I yeah. love you, mama. You know, I, I, we do our siblings <laughs> FaceTime and, and all is forgiven, but you're right. But, um, and, and you know, I'm going to get on y'all about that. Y'all don't, don't do me like that on live TV. <laughs> That's that y'all was pulling receipts on me. Re all right, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you all for, for watching. Brandon, it's great to have you back on. You were sharp as a bullet. You was hitting your free free throws and your three pointers. Like and Carl Anthony Towns. Like <laughs> 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 look, look with Tasha's mic drop, we will see y'all in six days and 23 hours. Until then, peace. <laughs>